well-being of every individual and promote the unity, stability, security and development of our country began long before the last election and will endure well beyond our time. It has been my manifest intention to live up to all the commitments set out in the plan and despite enormous challenges and tremendous difficulties, we have made encouraging progress in a positive direction. This has not only vindicated our philosophy of inclusive transformation in pursuit of shared prosperity, but it has also increased our confidence that we are on the right path and shall, in due course, deliver the transformation of our nation in full. It is important for us to point out that we began the implementation of our mandate to transform Kenya's economy from the bottom up under extreme difficult circumstances. Not to excuse failure or to justify inability or omission to, the to do the necessary work. Not at all. Rather, we do it to emphasize the significance of our progress underscore the possibility of transformation under daunting conditions and express well-founded confidence that when sufficient progress is made, we shall do much more and go much further in delivering the Kenya we want for our generations and also for posterity. In our plan, we identified three primary challenges, external shocks, fiscal distress, and structural imbalance that heavily strained our economy, causing nationwide difficulty. The COVID-19 pandemic, coupled with global supply chain disruptions and geopolitical conflicts, significantly raised inflation and interest rates, adversely affecting our economy, while low agricultural investment and a prolonged drought led to food shortages and made Kenya a net importer of food in a volatile international market. It was under conditions of such ex extreme difficulty that the people of Kenya entrusted us with the responsibility of simultaneously generating effective solutions to immediate problems, providing a credible pathway to stability in the medium term, and undertaking long-term structural transformation of our economy, but in a manner which paid attention to the needs and aspirations of Kenyans, especially those at the bottom of the pyramid. The transformation of our economy is not only desirable and important, it is also necessary and urgent. And the people of Kenya have made this clear at every opportunity. Our duty as leaders is to listen keenly and comply with the people's wishes. Kenyans want to proceed in a new direction and demand a new conversation that puts ordinary Kenyans, the Mamamboga security, well-being, interests and aspirations at the front and center of all policy and governance discourse. Citizen freedoms and fundamental rights lie at the heart of enterprise and democracy. Accordingly, our governance system must be fit for purpose, able to protect people and their belongings, safeguard freedom, facilitate democracy, and promote market efficiency. To do this, law enforcement must be robust, judicial integrity, efficiency and independence, absolute and the right to the protection of law, non-negotiable and impartial. Our police service and other actors in the justice law and order chain, including the judiciary, must therefore be professional, independent, impartial, effective and inspired by national values and principles of governance. In keeping with our promise to the people of Kenya, I signed important instruments on my first day on duty. Among them, 
the delayed appointments of six judges to the Court of Appeal as recommended by the Judicial Service Commission. Enhanced allocation through this house to the judiciary by 3 billion Kenyan shillings. Designated the Inspector General 